Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Yates, for being here. Why don't we just pick up right there? Because you know, the chairman says that, that he has no doubt that you had no intent to defraud the court. I noticed when Mr. Rosenstein was here before this committee, I'm sure you saw his testimony or read it a few weeks ago, he said that he couldn't be to blame or otherwise be held accountable for the falsified FISA applications, the many material misstatements of fact, uh, because he just relied on uh, the, uh, the representations that were made to him. So we're left wondering, I mean, who exactly is responsible here? It seems that nobody's really responsible. Somehow or another, a federal court, a secret federal court, was actively misled, lied to, and presented with falsified evidence, but nobody in the chain of command is to blame. So let me just ask you about your own responsibility. Did you actually read these FISA applications? I did. You did? That's your testimony yes. today? You yes, told I the, did. You told the Inspector General that you had no recollection, actually, of, of reviewing renewal application number one. Is that is your testimony today different? No, I think what I, was, what I told the Inspector General was I didn't have a specific recollection of sitting at my desk and asking questions about it, but I most assuredly reviewed it. You said that you did not have any specific recollection of reviewing renewal application number one. But today you say you did? That's great if you did, because I'd like to ask you some more detailed questions. I just want to get clear on this testimony. Yes, I did. Interesting. Um, now, you told the Inspector General that the Carter Page FISA applications that you signed off on and that you now say that you read and carefully reviewed, that uh, these applications, by the way, that contained multiple material misstatements and would later contain falsified evidence, you said that these were not a close call. You also told the IGE that you thought that the application, the initial application and the renewals were appropriate steps and you didn't have any qualms about them. Or do you recall what the FISA court said about these applications? Yes, Senator, and when I was speaking with the Inspector General, I was referring to the applications based on the assumption that all of the information was accurate. What was learned later, and what the FISA court was responding to later, is that there were errors and omissions. In well, the, the, er the errors and omissions were there at the time that you signed off on them, were they not? And you just testified that you read them closely, so they were there when you signed off on them, correct? That's correct. They okay, were. let me remind you what the FISA court said. I'll just read this in the record. The FBI's handling of the Carter Page applications, which you approved and you now say you read, was antithetical to the heightened duty of candor owed to the court. The frequency with which representations made by FBI personnel turned out to be unsupported or contradicted by information in their possession and with which they withheld information detrimental to their case calls into question whether information contained in other FBI applications is reliable, end quote. Are you still of the view that these applications were not a close call at all, and you uh, would do the same thing now? I mean, this was, these were appropriate steps, I think, was your testimony of the IG. Do you stand by that? Yes, Senator. I think if you properly put my testimony in context when I spoke with the Inspector General, I was referring to the decision that I made at the time based on the factual information that was presented to me and known to So you were a passive party in this. I mean, you, you did testify now in contrast to what you testified to the IG earlier, but you're telling us now today you did read the applications, but you were also duped by the FBI, and so it's for that reason you signed off on misleading applications that a FISA court said were so bad and so misleading they call into question all of the submissions by the FBI. So you, you're a passive party. Is that your testimony today? No, sir. Senator, I was not passive at all. Then what My did you do to actually exert some sort of control and exercise responsibility? And what, let me just ask you this, what responsibility do you bear for the deliberate and systematic misleading of a secret federal court? As the Deputy Attorney General and the number two person of the Justice Department, I was responsible for the actions of every single employee at DOJ, all 113,000 of them. That includes everybody at FBI and DEA and ATF and all the U.S. Attorney's offices and all the lawyers at the Department of Justice. I was responsible in that sense for the actions of all of them. So do you regret the fact that you signed applications that contained false and misleading material that a court says now calls into question their ability to rely on anything that the FBI says? 
Oh, I, I certainly regret that, that the Department of Justice submitted with the FBI FISA applications that were inaccurate. I think that is antithetical to our responsibility to the FISA court. I think it is also inconsistent with what my experience with the FBI had been in terms of their preparation of affidavits and the accuracy. Let me ask you just about one other thing, Mr. Chairman. I see my time has expired. So let me just, one, one final question. I, I noticed that you, you said Ms. Yates to the IG that uh, you didn't know who Christopher Steele was working for. In fact, you opined to the IG that you thought maybe he was working for the Republican Party. Of course, we know from Steele himself, Steele told the IG that he, Steele, told the FBI in July of 2016 that he'd been hired by the Democrats. We also know that your deputy, Bruce Orr, knew that Steele was working for the Democrats. And the same deputy, Bruce Orr, your deputy, while he was working for you, was actively facilitating contacts between the FBI and, uh, and uh, Steele, and also between the State Department and Steele. How did this happen on your watch? Is it, is it normal for you to permit your deputies to facilitate contacts between political parties and the FBI and the State Department? Is that routine behavior? permitting Bruce Orr to do anything. As the Inspector General found, I was completely unaware of Bruce Orr's actions. I'm sorry, could you, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear that. Can you repeat that? Oh, I, I wasn't allowing Bruce Orr to do anything. As the Inspector General found in the IG report to which you have referred, that I was completely unaware of Bruce Orr's actions. And Bruce Orr had no involvement from our side in any of the Russian investigation or the Carter Page files. I would say in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, that I, we, I seem to detect a pattern here. There's, Ms. Yates testifies she has no idea what her deputy is doing as he facilitates contact between a political party opposition research and the FBI. She has no idea that these, these applications that she signed materially misled a federal court. Just as Rosenstein said, he had no idea. Nobody appears to know anything in this government, and yet somehow a federal court was deliberately and systematically misled so severely that they now say they can't trust anything that the FBI did. If this doesn't call for a cleaning of house at DOJ and the FBI, I don't know what is, and I just know that Bruce Orr is still on the payroll at the Department of Justice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Coons. Yeah. I'm Mr. sorry, we want a five-minute break. I apologize, Ms. Yates. Uh, Mr. We'll, Chairman. We'll take a break from Ms. Yates. I, I see no reasons for those remarks. They're inflammatory. Uh, I, I think the witness ought to be able to respond if she chooses to. She certainly may, and uh, let me just give my two cents worth. I don't think they're inflammatory at all. I think it's the truth. Bruce Orr is apparently going rogue. You got, got her deputy orchestrating interviews and meetings, and he tells the FBI in November, you need to watch Steele. What the hell's going on over there? I don't That's think why we're could, doing this. I, I don't, since my remarks are the ones that are just challenged, Mr. Chairman, I'll just say with all due respect, we have a deliberate and systematic misleading of a federal court here. I don't think you can say anything more inflammatory than what the federal court itself said when they issued an incredible statement. I've never seen a federal court, let alone the FISA court issue, saying that they now had no confidence in any of the submissions of the FBI based on the level of lying. Well, everybody's to, to blame and nobody's to blame exactly. uh, is the problem we have. We'll take a five-minute break and we'll let her respond.